Hey guys, today I've got something pretty epic for you guys in store. I'm going to teach you guys the three different methods you can use to create your own live event, animation or moving object. Okay, so first of all, hooray for new intro! And before we go on, I just want to say I'll be doing a special 15k Q&A video, so if there's anything you'd want to know about me, my maps, my building, tutorials or anything else, now's the time. Just leave a comment or come join my Discord. Okay, so as I said, there are three different methods that you can use, and I'm going to go over each one of these separately, but if you truly want to make your own animation, you can combine these three methods into something that looks absolutely insane. And to demonstrate the power of mixing up these mechanics, let me show you a clip of the black hole event recreated in Fortnite Creative by Loud Silencer. So guys, before we go on, do me a big favor and go show Loud Silencer some love. His socials are in the description below if you want to go check him out. He has a lot of really cool live events and cool stuff, everything made in creative. Now, let's just jump straight into it. First up, we're going to make a mechanic that is very easy to implement in your puzzle and adventure maps. Especially if you have some spare channels at the end. And to do that, we're going to need a cannon. So I have all the pieces ready here, IKEA style, and let's just quickly assemble it. Okay, now that we got that in place, I also set up a little zombie here, and that's the one we're going to shoot with our big cannon. And right next to our zombie, particles. And this is the first secret to our first mechanic. I have an explosive device, smoke from the spooky particle gallery that I set to red, some flames from the dusty depot meteor particle gallery, then some lighting particles from the same spooky gallery as before as the smoke, and then finally I have three different customizable lights but you can set or change or use whatever particles or beacons you want. But before we actually use these particles, I'm going to throw down a button here. Now configure it, set the times it can trigger to one, the interaction radius to one meter, and the text to start blowing up the zombie or whatever you want. And when I close the manual, you'll see this bubble around the button. That's because the interaction radius. So as long as I'm close to that circle once the game starts, I'll be able to interact with the button meaning I can hide the actual button inside the bottom of the cannon. The only thing left to do is set the when interact the width, transmit on to channel 1, which is going to be our starting channel for the live event. Now fly right next to it and throw down a sequencer. Leave the length to 4 and the tempo lower it all the way down to 8. Why? Because if we put it to 8 and the length to 4, that will mean that it will take 30 seconds to reach the end. And then scroll all the way to the bottom and set the start sequence when receiving from to channel 1. So, easy. You press the button at the cannon, which will start the sequencer. And now all we're going to have to do is throw triggers in it that transmit on channels. And then bind some particles and elements one by one to activate them and make it look like it's charging up and then shooting. Let me just start by indicating it with this big light here and we'll place it under the cannon and then rotate it a little bit so that it looks like the beam of light is coming out of this tube kind of thing here. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect here because it's just for a demo. Once we have the position correct, let's configure it quickly. Change the initial state to off. The reason I didn't configure that before placing it is that so I can see exactly where the beam will come out. Anyway, set the brightness and color to your personal preference and set the turn on when receiving from to channel 1, which is the one that gets called when we press the button and we start the music sequencer. This way, as soon as the button is pressed, the first part will already activate and we save a channel. For everything else, we'll have to throw down triggers inside the sequencer. Next up, let me show you how a particle would work. 
So, after that I'll just time lapse over it as the process is exactly the same for everything, but I want to show you guys with a particle as well. So let me grab this lightning here and we'll make it hit the top of the tube at different angles. So the first one I'm going to place right inside of it and just leave it up straight without rotating. And then play around a little bit with it, rotating it until it looks like the lighting is hitting from the east or the west. Once I have it positioned correctly, I'm going to copy it one more time but coming from the other side. And I'm not placing them inside yet with the other one so that I can configure them one by one. Now, as I already mentioned in my how to create a boss fight video, you can set the particles to pre-game only visibility. The advantage of this is that you can see exactly how it will look once activated, but you don't have to worry about it showing when you start the game. If you haven't seen the how to create a boss fight video series yet, then go and check that out as it's really awesome. Okay, where were we? Okay, right, particles. The only thing we need to do now is set to unable when receiving from to channel 2. And now we'll continue to do this for all these other lights and particles. So let me just time jump over it. <clears throat> As it's just more of the same with a new channel every time. And while I'm time jumping and building, do me a favor. You see that pretty like button right under the video? Smash that. It really helps me out a lot. So go on, click it. I'll wait. Did you like it? Good. I'm almost done with setting these particles meanwhile. So, I guess you still have time to do something else. Ooh, I know. You can hit that little bell as well so that you can get notified every time I post some awesome new stuff. Good. Okay, good. Now that we have all our particles in place, let me just show you this explosive device. I'm going to copy it a couple of times to create the explosion-like effect. But, remove the explode when receiving from channel. Why, you might ask? Because the first one is going to explode on a channel and then just chain react everything else. So that will look like a giant explosion after the fire particle. And now lastly, I just need to throw a trigger in the sequencer. The more space you leave between these triggers, the longer it will take for the next particle or thing to start happening in your live event. So once you have them all thrown in there, then just play around with spacing. Some might need to be triggered a little bit faster or slower than others, depending on what event you're creating. Okay, so let's start it and see. So we have our little zombie here. When activating our live event, first the light, and you can see the sequencer in the back as well that starts running. Then about 3 to 5 seconds later, the lightning starts hitting. Cannon starts charging, lights turn on, smoke starts coming out, explosions, and lastly the explosive device triggers, blowing up our zombie and starts the fire. Now this is just a little demo, but as always, play around with this and fine-tune it. The possibilities are endless, as you just saw in the loud silencer clip I showed you. Don't forget to also bind the last channel you used to disable the effects you want to disappear once the event is done. In this example, I unbound all the lighting particles because they make a lot of noise. You can also add music blocks or sound effects to make it come over even more. Now that we got that sorted out, I'm going to show you guys the next method you can use, which works great with the star barrier, but step by step. So I happen to have a like button pixel art here and the bell pixel art here that I set up. And you know what that means, it means you gotta hit the like button. Come on guys, show me some love. So how are we gonna do this? By disabling the barriers. So fly right behind the last object you want to show and make sure that the entire revealing object is in front of the grid tile. Then grab a barrier and place it down. Set the width and height to a value that is bigger than your object. So the bigger the object, the bigger your barrier needs to be. And then up the depth of your barrier so that the object is completely hidden inside. If it's not completely inside like I have here, then you need to up it a little bit more. Then when flying back, you'll see that I can no longer see the notification bell. But for this demo, I have two reveals. So I'm going to up the depth even more so that the like button is hidden as well. Awesome. Now right next to it, I'm going to set another barrier, also using the same star field, with the same height and width, but the depth set it a little bit smaller, so that it does not include the like button, but still covers up the little bell. And then a third time as well, with a barrier that doesn't block the view of the bell or the like button, but still shows the starry background. And it also has the same height and width. You see where we're going with this? 
Now, to reveal our objects in the actual game, throw down a trigger, set the time scan trigger to one, the visibility to off, and the when triggered, transmit on to a free channel. Since I set this up on the same map as our cannon, I'm going to have to take a random channel here that I know is free, like 70. And then bind the same channel 70 to the disable when receiving from of our most outer barrier, which in our case is the first one we placed, the middle one. And now to indicate where the player has to shoot, I'm going to add a star from the beacon gallery as it goes great with the starry background. So pick a color you like, place it right in front of the trigger and set the hide when receiving from to that same channel 70. Now to top it all off, I'm going to drop a boom ball here because I like the explosion to make it show our like button. So start the game, starry background with a single star. Shoot it and hit that like button. Now for our little bell reveal, we'll do the same as with the like button, but with a different channel. So just disable it when receiving from channel 71. Then copy and paste the trigger and the star and place it in front of the like button, just inside the most outer barrier. And set the visibility of the star to 70, which is our first reveal, and the transmit on to channel 71. Now we'll have one issue though. The like button will still be there. So what can we do about that? Blow it up, of course. Just grab an explosive device from the creative inventory, place it right behind the like button, and change the visibility, destroy indestructible buildings to on, and the explode when receiving from channel 71. So let's start the game and see how that looks. So hit the first star and we see the like button. Then hit it again and we get our little bell. Okay, enough with the self-promoting. Let's get on with our third and last mechanic. So we have the first method, which is the particles that use looks and make it feel like something is happening. Then we have the revealing method to show objects that weren't there before. But we still have the last issue, which is moving objects. So let me demonstrate how we're going to fix that with the falling media. We're going to make it look like it's falling and moving towards us. So I'm going to grab a meteor from the Dusty Depot Meteor Gallery. Make it a little bit smaller and rotate it and take it a bit away from our other two mechanics. I'm also going to delete my previous spawn pad and move it right over here, so that we're instantly where we need to be. Now, under my meteor, I'm going to place another star field barrier, but this time I'm going to use the hollow box shape instead, so that we can stand inside of it. Then set the width and depth to 5 and the height all the way to max. Now you don't see it yet, but if I fly out and back in, we'll see the starry night surrounding the meteor. Now move the meteor a little bit so that it's right above us and place our spawn pad right here, inside of the box. Now what I'm going to do is go right next to my current box and place another starry night barrier with the same depth, width and height. Okay, as you can see, I now have two boxes right next to each other. And we're going to copy over our meteor as well. And to make sure it's exactly at the same height, place a wall right next to the barrier, then multi-select the meteor and the wall, and then copy and paste it inside the other barrier with the wall in the same position. Now we have two identical boxes, but we don't want it to be identical as we want the meteor to start falling down. So just cut it and drag it a little bit more down. Now for demo purpose, I'm only going to do this three times. So let me set up another starry night box, copy over the meteor again into the third box using the same wall method, and then just drag it a little bit more down to the ground. So what do we have now? Three identical boxes, but in each box, the meteor is closer to the floor. And what are we gonna do? Very easy. We're going to teleport the player between these identical boxes, making it look like the object is moving instead of the player. Now I'm going to set a button to start the event, but you can use a trigger or anything you want, or just do it on the game start even. You have this button, transmit on a free channel, and then throw down a teleporter as I just said, and copy it over to your second box, placing it in the exact same spot as where the button was in the first one. For the best effects, I would set the options as followed. Remove the teleporter group and target group, visibility to hidden, visual effects and sounds to no, Conserve momentum to know because we don't want the player to feel like he's being teleported But we want it to feel like the object is moving and lastly the teleport to when receiving from to the same free channel We set our current button to to interact on I just set it to 65 because I know that one is free because I'm still working on that same map Lastly throw down a trigger just outside of this box so that you don't have to worry about visibility or interaction 
This is going to be our trigger that is going to determine how much time goes between each teleport and therefore moving object. So set the teleport when receiving from to channel 65, which is the one we get changed to in the second box, and the when triggered transmit arm to channel 66. Then lastly, set the delay to one or two seconds. The shorter the delay, the faster and smoother the object animation will look. But you'll also need a lot more boxes to make it look really good. I set it to two seconds here and right now to show you guys, but as you'll see, it's not that smooth, so it's better to set it to one. And then grab your teleporter and paste it in your third box as well, leaving all the options the same, but the teleport to when receiving from to channel 66. Now you can repeat this process as many times as you want to make it look smoother or keep adding more effects. So let's start the game just to see. I press the button, get teleported to the second box, which has the meteor slightly lower, and then after two seconds I'll get teleported to the last box, which has it even lower, making it look like the meteor is falling towards us. Like I said, it's better to set it to one second to make it even smoother. Now combine all of these three mechanics to make your own live event and come show me what you've made in my Discord. Link in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I can't wait to see all the cool stuff you guys are gonna come up with. I'll see you guys soon.